Hi, hello, my name is Harriet Cornwell and I'm Head of History at Lodge Park Academy. My presentation for Educating North Hants is on powerful stories and how they are crafted. So, stories are a vital tool for teaching history. We want the stories which we have in our curriculum to be a memorable experience, a method for delivering powerful new knowledge. So to ensure the stories we deliver are memorable, we need to ensure that they are carefully crafted. So I'm now going to take you through some core principles of the powerful stories which we have incorporated into our curriculum. The types of stories we teach are based on English, European and world history and these are interwoven throughout our Key Stage 3 history. Each lesson sequence is designed around an inquiry question. A specifically designed puzzle which will contain many stories with a host of different characters will be based around the story of one powerful, remarkable, rememberable individual. We have also used short lesson sequences. So typically the longest lesson sequence we have on our curriculum is eight lessons long. This is because we don't want our students to lose sight of the inquiry question. We don't want our stories to last one term and we don't want one-off lessons where essentially we have got a lost story where students learn about one topic or one individual for one lesson and then it is simply forgotten. So we're now going to move on and we're going to have a look at the key elements of crafting powerful stories. So not everyone is a natural storyteller. So crafting and writing powerful stories can really help this for all members of staff within the subject. When we are developing a new lesson sequence, we would dive into our writer's toolkit to craft powerful stories. Essentially, your students don't see key elements which go into crafting a powerful story. In theory, they should just remember the story you have just taught them. However, there are two key elements or two key ingredients which go into crafting a powerful story. So, our first ingredient is plot points, or essentially, what are the key facts? Plot points are the details for creating the story. They include events, places, people and characters. Our first ingredient of plot points should then be combined with the second, which is narrative. So this second ingredient is based around key ideas of structure, conflict and mystery. It's really important to remember that the narrative is the way which you structure your story. It is the path that students take to reveal the plot. So in history, normally the narrative, the way which we tell the story, is chronological. Normally, this is where the story starts and then we take students on a journey and then it ends. Potentially, and we have some of these on our history curriculum, is you could start with a cut scene at the end and work your way back to the beginning. Now to make a story memorable in your narrative, you have to have conflict and you have to have drama. So conflict doesn't essentially mean you have to have a war or a battle. It can be a political conflict, religious, social, or even a personal inner conflict. So with our first two ingredients, plot points and narrative, we have our powerful story. It's powerful due to the way it's sequenced through the plot and the narrative. So we're now going to work our way on to a worked example. And a worked example is for year seven and I have chosen the Battle of Hastings, which happened in 1066. 
So we're going to have a look at our plot points, our narrative, and then how this results in a powerful story. So ingredient one then, the plot points. So for this, within this lesson sequence, we would have the Battle of Hastings. This essentially would be part of our key narrative. We'd then include places. So we'd mention the location of battle. So that's modern day battle. Seven miles northwest of Hastings, however, in 1066, battle in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle was referred to as the Grey Apple Tree. We would then have our people, so William I, Harold Godwinson, and potentially if we wanted to make the narrative more complex, we would also include the character of Harold Hadrada. So, moving on then to our combination of our second key ingredient, which is narrative. So, for this lesson sequence, we would structure it chronologically. So, starting in January 1066 and then ending on Christmas Day the same year. The conflict and drama which arises here is Edward the Confessor has no heir and it is essentially or debatably, arguably, one of the most famous battles in English history. So, the mystery element here. So, unfortunately, some students may already know the result of the battle. So, the mystery here will come from the finer details of the story. So, as you've been imparting new knowledge in this lesson sequence, students may have generated their own questions about the event. So, for example... How did the battle start? So instead of simply learning that the Battle of Hastings began with a shower of arrows which rained down on the Anglo-Saxons, a more powerful narrative to include would be when the, two Anglo when the two sides saw each other, both the Anglo-Saxons and the Normans rushed to arms. This was so sudden that William, in his haste, put on his mail shirt the wrong way round. So, by combining the plot points and the narrative, we have got a, narr a powerful story. It's memorable. We have got sticky knowledge here. And both these elements work hard to make sure that the story is memorable. So, knowledge is sticky. Lesson sequences need to have lots of scope and opportunity for imparting sticky micro strands of knowledge through the narrative which you construct as a writer. So thank you for listening to my presentation for Educating North Hants. I hope you've enjoyed it. Many thanks. Goodbye.